So, however, note that the Schedule C's and other types of businesses uh, types and industries and so on can get quite complex in and of themselves, partially simply because of the bookkeeping. I'm studying bookkeeping. Of putting together the books of, a, of an income statement for a business and also uh, in terms of the, the taxes related to them specifically. So we'll dive a lot more into a Schedule C in future presentations. Right now, we just want to touch on it as an item that's ultimately going to be pulled into, in essence, the net income from the business into line one uh, of income. Okay, so if I look at the schedule, uh, the schedule one, then the business income is going to be pulling in right here. Now notice that the business income, where did my cursor go? My cursor has gotten lost. It's right there, the 20,000. Now notice that this is pulling in from a Schedule C. So the Schedule C is another income statement that's going to be pulling into the Schedule 1, which is basically our focus uh, at this point in time. There will also be other consequences on the tax return from the Schedule C, which we'll touch on in the tax software example, and we'll dive into in a lot more detail uh, in a future presentation when we focus on the Schedule C's in general. Just realize here that a Schedule C adds a lot of complication to the tax return, more than you would you would at first glance expect, because not only does the income statement have to be added on a Schedule C, but then you can have uh, tax, the, the net income has to flow over, and then you also have self-employment kind of situations, possibly health insurance kind of situations, other things that might be deductible related to uh, to the business, you know, like a like an IRA or SEP or something like that. A simple uh, could be on the business. So you've got all these other kind of contingencies, and you have the deductible portion of the self-employment tax, the self-employment tax, and then you've also got this qualified business income deduction, which is a kind of a mess in and of itself. So again, if you're doing taxes, you want to think do I want to take on clients that have Schedule C's and whatnot, more complex situations, or do I want to specialize in a certain area? Remember that put your business plan together, scale your business plan, and don't you know, let the clients kind of bully you into taking them on when you don't want to take them on or, or something like that, right? You got to say, no, I'm not doing, you know, this is what I'm doing. I have my business plan. You don't fall within it. I can suggest someone else uh, to help you, but otherwise they'll just, you know, a lot of tax preparers actually don't make a lot of money because because they 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 don't specialize the way they plan to, or they don't plan to specialize in a way that works, and then they just, you know, you get you get job creep. You end up you end up doing more and more work. I'm doing more work, work, work. Uh, and so just be aware. So line three, business income or loss. So if you operated a business or practiced uh, your profession as a sole proprietor, report your income and expenses on Schedule C. And then we also can look at the uh, line for other gains or losses. And uh, if you sold or exchange assets used in a trader business, see the instructions for form 4797. So now you're, you're talking typically fixed assets that were sold where you might have another form involved. So we'll take a look at this in, in a little bit more detail. Uh, in our in our example, just to see how this flows through on the tax forms. And then again, we'll talk about it in more depth when we talk about a Schedule C in general. Here's a quick glance at the form uh, 4797, sale of business, uh, business property. 